All right, let's get rolling. Thank you all for coming. Uh, appreciate you all coming out to practice and appreciate you. Um, I think it's good for you to be out there. It's good for you to report back. Appreciate you not showing pictures of full 11 and video. So I appreciate y'all doing that. Uh, we had practice 11 today um, and we're kind of right in the middle. And what we do is um, right up until our first scrimmage, we had a scrimmage on Friday. Uh, we went in the stadium. Uh, we tackled for most of it. Um, and, uh, and that was practice nine. So right up practice nine, like uh, one through eight is basically there's a lot of drills, fundamentals, group. Um, and then starting at practice nine, it was all team. And then practice 10 was a little bit like you saw today. Um, after you guys left, we did all 11 on 11 football after that. And, and we'll do that. We're going to do all team on Friday. We'll do mostly team again next Tuesday. Thursday, it's a helmets practice. So it'll be, and then we'll have our spring game on Saturday. And, and we'll talk more about um, either myself or Monty will kind of give you the, the format for the spring game uh, toward the end of next week. But that's kind of, we're in the evaluation piece is we, we, we've skill, we work skills for development, you know, drills for skill development. Now we're in working a lot of team for evaluations, trying to get a, a good picture of where our personnel is, you know, and, and like who's taking the next step and who has gone from a red shirt, or who's gone from a, a, a backup to potential can, can play a lead role, who's a guy that was kind of off the radar that now is, is ready to be maybe a core special teams player. Um, that's kind of the decisions that are made over the next. And then we really start trying to work on some opponent stuff and some different looks, you know, because one of the things about spring is you want to rep your schemes, but you can get some bad habits if you're just going against your offense and defense basic looks. So we'll do some things on offense to get our defense ready. Uh, we'll do some things on defense to get our offense ready, you know, for the season. And so um, that's kind of where we're at. And so with that, I'll, uh, I'll take questions. So, you Neil, know, follow up with a little bit of that. You went over that. I you know Cody asked about most improved, but a little bit of fast climbers this year, guys that have maybe weren't factors in the past that now look like they could be too deep major special teams guys this year? Yeah, I think from a you know special team standpoint, I'm going to talk about some guys I think that are showing up. You know, we've really prioritized those. You know, a couple guys on offense would be Jalen Anderson, you know, he's a guy that he's never played special teams here, and it's really been a want-to deal. And so really stressed to him in January, he needed to be a complete football player and be able to help the team. And he's came and he's, he's done really well. Uh, TJ Johnson is redshirted last year, and now TJ is coming out. And he is starting to – we do a lot of these competitions um, during spring. It's kind of controlled um, – competitions for special teams and TJ's been a real pleasant surprise in that and really starting to do that. Colin McBee is another guy. Um, you know, start talking on defense is Reed Carrico um, has really, ever since Friday, has really put several nice days together uh, defensively and special teams. Like he's going to be um, a factor on both. Um, talk about uh, Zay Jennings, who's an early enrollee. A really good football player. It's happening really fast for him on defense, but you can see his talent and his ability on special teams. Um, he's a guy that's playing himself into that. Uh, Derek Burlitz is a guy that's, um, you know, that I think is going to help us in our punch shield in the back line on kickoff return. And so he's been in our program now going on his third year, and, and he's showing signs of, of being one of those guys. Um, I think Jordan Jackson, defensively and on special teams, is has shown some growth, especially here uh, since Friday. Um, but those are those are some guys like some other guys are sticking out, like Caden Beiser and a couple other guys that have uh, done well on special teams. But those are some kids that are really kind of showing up. Curious, um, when you got an older team, do you plan and practice differently in the spring than you would if you had a bunch of younger guys that you had to train and develop? Well, I think that. It's really not necessarily anymore if you have a young or an old team. It's just kind of you got to be careful, you know, like, um, um, you know, everything moves so much. There's so much movement. And so, you know, maybe five, ten years ago, you're really trying to get a bunch of reps with what may be your first team and maybe your second team. And now it's not like that because there's going to be some movement. And so 
like let's say in at offensive line or defensive line, you know, like chemistry and, and, and having groups play together is really important, especially on the O line. Um, but the spring is there's moving parts. So what you try to do is you're rotating guys because everybody needs to learn how to kind of play with everybody because you don't know what the fall is going to look like. Um, and so it's more of the other thing too is like I think is you know and this is why we do this is I think guys generally like just playing the game. You know, so like to keep our energy levels up from kind of the midpoint, or I guess the last third of the spring is we just play a lot of football, you know, 11 on 11 football, try to make it competitive situations. Um, that's kind of the thought process. Neil, you, you mentioned Zay earlier. Um, something I don't think we've discussed a lot is early enrollees are the true freshmen. Mm -hmm. um, Besides, give us a little evaluation of them and any of them you think could help you in the fall. Yeah, I think that Zay, Israel Boyce would be the other one that's – Israel's really kind of second part of the scrimmage um, on through um, um, on through today's practice is, is coming along. Uh, Nate Gabriel is um, a big athlete, and um, he's learning. He's learning, but physically he's going to be – he's going to be ready to help us. And I think if that nose position will be able to give us some snaps in the, in the fall. Um, just trying to think here as far as any other early enrollees that have really kind of jumped out to me. Or anybody that haven't. Anybody that's off that you want to ask about? No, I mean, you've got uh, Kinsler, I guess. Is Kinsler, he's, he's got more reps today. And he's going, he's going to be a really, really good player. Um, and he, we're moving him around because he's a smart guy. And so – He's, he's been getting some reps, and he can be a factor. I tell you, Jack Samarco, um, he's got to continue to get stronger. He's getting a lot of reps because Cole's not going. And um, I don't know if it's going to happen as quick as the fall, but he's going to be a quality tight end for us. And he has really good hands. And he's as he gets stronger, he's going to be good at the point of attack because he's big. Based on sheer numbers, would you say this is the most you've got ready, capable to play right now? at any time since you've been here in terms of just sheer numbers on offense, defense, special teams? Yeah, I think there? Yeah, I think that when we get to the fall, yeah, I would say in the fall, you know, because we're still – yeah, we're still missing some pieces right now, you know, whether that's portal. Then we got those signees that haven't gotten here. But I, in the fall, that would be accurate as long as everything stays – yeah, yeah, I would say in the fall that's absolutely going to be the case. You know, and where it really shows up is on special teams. You know, like we, we do this uh, – um, we call it a four-on-four four drill, and it's really a competitive drill, uh, punt, punt, return. And we did it the other day, and, like, as we watched it as a staff, the comment was – I forget who said it. I don't know if Jeff said it. Um, but it was by far the most competitive, and it was, like, a lot of good on good player reps, which I think is a credit to our overall depth and guys just understanding the techniques that we're teaching in those areas. I, I got to ask you this. I asked Jeff this on Monday. You know, of all the skills that you do in practice, the one thing that you do up to the collision is kickoff. How do you, how do you know what you got on kickoff or kickoff return? Because you only go up to a certain point. That's the only thing I can think of in sports. You don't do the actual full thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a science. And we didn't master it last year because we weren't very good on kickoff. Um, you know, I think what we try to do, and this is in the spring, really overall in special teams, like punt and field goal are really the only teams that we do all 11. Most of it is part, part, whole. And so what I mean by that is in the spring is we're going kind of individual techniques and then kind of pods. You know, so when I say pods, maybe it's the left guard, left tackle on punt. Maybe it's the right up back, right returner, right end on kickoff return. On kickoff, maybe it's, you know, the guys that are, um, you know, kind of the ball, the, the ball guy and the capper. We're working those in pods, but we don't work all 11. Now, once we get into in fall camp, we do, but it's limited, you know. And I'm, it's probably less than five full speed. We do a kick scrimmage where I know we hit two live, and then we probably get at the start of practice, you know, two or three more leading into the first game. Um, and that's it. Yeah, and that's it. And it's, it's hard. You know, and like what we've tried to do to get better at kickoff is a lot of our tackling drills that we do 
now as part of our special team circuits are kickoff tackles. Like, um, like we missed a ton of tackles just overrunning the ball from the backside. You know, so now what we're doing is we're really working a wrap tackle where we're sprinting and we're practicing it on the track landing pad. So it's not it's not putting a bunch of force on your shoulders. Um, but just that was point of emphasis in off season is trying to figure out how can we practice these tackles that we're missing on kickoff without having 22 bodies out there. You know, having more linebackers it certainly helps. The it's going to help in special teams. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's going to help kick off. You know the, you know our. Our bandit spur bodies, they can, like Tyron Bradley, Ty Friend, those guys can run well too. Like Sean Martin's a guy that um, he runs well. Like he's like 19, 20 all the time on the GPS. So, like he's a guy that uh, could even be a factor on kickoff force too. You know, when, you, when you were an in coach, I'm sure you had a vision of, of your progress. Mm -hmm. And, of course, everything happened to, to change that vision. I mean, uh, the road was not a straight road to where you got – but are you now where you thought you might be at this point, uh, or, is it, or, or are you still trying to catch up from COVID, from uh, NIL and transfer you know, and all that? I just think that this is the way I look at it, Bob, is like, <clears throat> so after that season in 22, where I felt like we underachieved, like I just hit the reset button on, on a lot of it. Um, and so I don't know, um, I probably didn't have six-year plan when I got here uh, as far as just thinking about what we'd look like going into year six in the spring. Um, and so I probably can't answer that question. What I can say is after that 22 where things didn't go the way I thought they should or the way we didn't play as well in any phases I thought we were capable of, so we underachieved, is we just changed um, a lot of what we were doing. And there was a, just a big reset in our program. And so now – what I think of is, all right, this is – we are in, like, month 16 of kind of the reboot, and we're making progress. You know, I can't sit here and tell you in the spring. I'll tell, I'll be able to tell you probably after three or four games in the fall. Um, but that's the way I look at it. We're kind of – month 16 going in – we're in spring, kind of the second year of our reboot. That's the way I'm thinking about it. Are you starting to become the team, though? Yeah, that, like, that, yeah. The, the, main, the main thing on that is – just from a simple, there's a lot of things off the field and a lot like, but from a simple football point, is is we want to be a team that is disciplined, it strains, is tough, and is smart. And so, and all of those traits take absolutely no talent. And so, what we do is like. We have things that we do from our winter program through spring ball to summer to fall camp into the season on our Tuesdays and Wednesdays that we are working that identity of who, like who we have to be to be successful. And again, it's just being disciplined, it's straining, it's being tough, that's mental and physical toughness, and it's being smart. And so we take in this 12-month approach to football, who we are from a football identity standpoint, um, and I think some of the fruits of our labor, like I'll give you an example is, is like we're tackling much better in the spring. Well, we're in month 16 of a total revamp of how we taught tackling, how we worked it, you know, and it's, it's a year round approach from even going back into the winter, how Mike in strength conditioning how they work angles and how we work deceleration and things like that into the spring ball, into our summer OTAs, into fall camp. And so, like, we're showing signs that we're a much better tackling team, which goes under physical toughness. And we work it, you know. Like, we talk a lot about, like, striking with your hands because that's part of physical toughness. Well, we work that in the weight room, like on these strike pads we have. We do grip training, <laughs> you know, like – so. Um, we're in progress of like that identity that we need to be. Um, I'm pleased with where we're at 16 months into it, but we've not arrived. Um, but I can't, you know, if we sit here after three or four games and you ask the same question, I'll be able to give you like, yes, I think we're where we need to be or no, we're not. 
the injured guys from the spring rehab going well? Any setbacks yeah, so, there? No, nah, so Asani, Asani is, uh, I think he's on track. He, he won't be back in the spring. You know, TJ Crandall's been down with a hamstring. It's not serious, but it's nagging. We'd list, you know, he'd like to be out there. We'd like to be out there. We'd like him out there. Um, you know, Jacoby, I told you that's going to be right up into the fall, early, early in the season. Um, you know, um, anybody else you're asking about? Yeah, it? I mean, it looked like Cole and Tom. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Back. So, yeah. CJ. So, um, going back. So, um, CJ has done everything except take contact. Um, he could play in a game if we had a game. Um, but he's he'll be um, – he's going to be fine. Cole had a little uh, operation upper body, um, nothing serious. He'll be full go. He'll be fully released in the summer. Um, they're doing individual drills. Y'all saw him out there today. Uh, there is no contact at this point. Tomas is the other one. He's starting to do individual. He could not do. He got released to do individual. I think the beginning of last week. So he's out there doing individual, but won't do any eleven on eleven work. Grayson. Grayson. So Grayson just had another procedure. He's kind of. He had some really bad luck with a with a lower body, just kind of nagging. He uh, missed some of the winter, came back, practiced early in spring, just didn't feel 100%, so he got a little procedure done. And uh, I think it's about a, a month. He's about a month out from being able to run on, on hard ground, I think. Like yeah, so McIntyre, he had a he had a lower body injury on um, – today is Wednesday, right? Monday. Yeah, and we'll know more about that probably later in the week. Didn't look good though. Your uh, receivers, part of the just moving guys around. Um, I guess and maybe it's, this is always true, but you want people to know as many things as possible, depth, all that stuff. But like tactically, like, advantageous for you to have people who can just keep the defense I'm not guessing, but you can't. It's hard to match up. I guess if you're constantly moving your piece around, there's something there yeah. for you all that's good. But part of this versatility. I think what we're trying to do is in the spring, it's as much trial and error as anything. Like we want to teach them, Mike, conceptually. So, like if you if you think about it, anytime you're in a, a two by two set offensively, you usually have some type of two man concept to your left and two man concept to your right. And so, there's multiple ways to teach it. You can just teach, you know, hey, this is your route that you do. Every time we call this, this is what you do. Or you can teach the concept. All right, so early on what you do, if you get a guy that comes in in the summer or they get there in fall camp, you just want them to know their individual responsibility. Um, but now we've got all these guys outside of Jaden Bray that have been in the system now since we hit the reboot last January. And so now what we're trying to do is teach them conceptually. And so – and it keeps them on their toes because it gets a little monotonous in spring practice, so it keeps them on their toes. So, like – Hudson Clement, he's probably uh, more comfortable outside, but we're challenging him so he learns all the spots, inside and out. And so he knows what to do. Traylon Ray, he feels more comfortable outside, but he's been getting reps inside so he knows what to do. And so I think it's about, you know, trial and error, teaching them the concepts, gives you some flexibility once you get in the fall because if you have some injuries or things like that, they know what to do and then they have some comfort because they've gotten some reps against good people. Would be a situation where a guy is, I don't know, if he's like a, a Y for a series and there's no easy to see outside? Or is yeah, there... if you'd like today, if you were watching, like Hudson did that today. Like Hudson played inside for a series, he played outside for a series. Um, you know, we've been messing around playing Rodney a little bit, like as a, as a nickel on defense. And so, like, when he went over, when Rodney went over and took some snaps on defense, Hudson came in and played um, – and, and, we're, and we're messing with, with Rodney on that just because he's got really good lateral uh, quickness. He played defense in high school. Um, and it'll give us some flexibility there. Um, and he's done, he's done pretty well. He's done pretty well. So we were just kind of – we just been throwing him in there a little bit. Yeah, that's, it's our most complete room. You know, they've got to go out and make plays, you know, before I say it's our best. But, like, there's a lot of competition in there. And that's what you want. You want competition in every single one of your rooms. Um, and if you look at it now, I mean, we got you know six guys really that are that are competing. And again, going back to what I was telling Mike is conceptually too is they're playing both positions, so they have to know both Mike and Will, and so that keeps them on their toes. Um, 
you know, Josiah Trotter, it's been nice to have him. Like, he just plays the game the right way. Like, he's, he's going to make mistakes, but it's mistakes you can deal with because he plays so hard. <laughs> you know, he's, and, and he has a physical presence. Um, so, excited as he continues to get comfortable um, playing in this defense. Time yet, but evaluating what you need moving forward. For yeah, I think so. A big part of it, it'll see you know who who we have is not going to be here, right? And um, I think when you think about it, like you want all of them, you want all of them, you want everybody that. Like we had a team meeting yesterday, and I was saying like we don't avoid it. Like the portal's open. Like you know, it's not like everybody's walking around going, I hope they don't figure out the portal's open, right? <laughs> now they they know it, um, and so you know, it's part of the kind of the reboot that I was talking about is one thing is, man, we're really transparent with our guys, like portals open. And what that basically means is everybody's a free agent. And so everybody has individual choices. And, um, you know, I think the thing that, you know, obviously money's a factor for some more than others. Some, you know, you know, I think it's a little bit, um, I think it's a little bit misleading what the narrative is out there on some of the money, you know, so dig into what the truth is, is kind of what, you know, really hard. And I said this, too, to our guys yesterday, and I really mean this. It's like everybody talks about, you know, there's a ton of benefits of being a, a college, like, football player or a men's basketball player. There's, they're making money, you know, more than they have, and they deserve it, right? But what people don't talk about is this, there's an added pressure element. You know, there's, um, there's this um, comparison component that wasn't there when I was playing, which doesn't seem too long ago. It's it, – you know, when I grow facial hair and I see all this gray, I'm like, ooh. Um, but there's a comparison component, you know, there that – that um, and, a, and kind of a FOMO, their fear of missing out, or they look and on social media. And, um, and I think that puts a lot of stress on them. And I think a lot of these guys get stress from, from outside influences that really um, – that – and some of them come from home. Some of them come from, from agents or things that – they don't really know what exactly is going on within their sphere, you know, and and so I think those pressures are real, and, and I feel for them. And it's um, there's a ton, like I said, there's a ton of benefits to to playing power four football, and but there's also a lot of pressure that a lot of people don't understand or don't don't talk about. And so like these during this time, like our players have a lot of pressure, and so I think that they always, you know, money's a factor. You know, I think the experience that you're having is a factor. And I think your individual situation is a factor. And so, like, everybody, they got to think about those things. Um, and I want everybody that, that practiced today, everybody that was in our team meeting yesterday and today, I want them part of our program. And, and, and we care about them. Um, but at the same time, I get those decisions. You know, I get those decisions. And if we have, if we have some movement, you know, I think that our secondary, we got to continue to take another, you know, we need one or two more bodies. We just don't have the depth there, you know. Um, I think we're better, but we need some depth. Um, depending on how a couple injury things work out D-line wise, um, you know, that could be a potential area of need too. Just, it, I think the injury picture will tell us on that. Yeah, we go back to Rodney play nickelback? Yeah. Um, thing, yeah, you know, I think to be determined. Yeah, like I, I told him in recruiting, like when we were when we were going through the recruiting process, I can remember uh, telling Big Rod this is – he played corner in high school, and I used to give him a hard time because, like, he played over there and he never showed up in the picture, right? He was never getting tackles or anything. But what you could see is, like, he could play man coverage. Like, he really – and um, and he didn't spend any time on it, right? He was a raw football player in general, and he played you – know, most of his practice time was spent at corner or at quarterback. Um, but, uh, you know, there's so much – like, when you're playing defense in basketball, you know, and I, I watched Rodney play basketball just because he was so close. Um I probably saw him, however, whatever the number of legal times I could see him, I saw him. So I, I can't remember if that's, I think it's three times. But um, when, like, you play man in basketball against good people and you stay in front of them and you have this presence where you, you got a feel where you can always play man me ball, you know. And he did that in basketball really well, St stayed in front of people. He wasn't a guy that crossed over, just naturally uh, could stay and, and had good, really good ball. Like he was, he, he had a lot of steals in basketball. Um, and so that translated in two areas for me. Number one, I knew he had great ball skills, even though you don't see him catch a bunch of passes in, uh, in high school football, because he was throwing them if they were, if they were throwing. Um, 
so I knew he had great ball skills. But the other thing, too, is, like, I, I knew he had great change of direction and he had skills that – where he could go over and play defense. And so what we've done is we're not really coaching him much. It's kind of one of these um, things where, hey, we tell him, like, hey, this is what you're going to do. And we meet with him for about two minutes and he goes out there and it's like – if he looked bad, then we just went, I'll oh, just kidding, come back over, you know. But he's looked pretty good. And so, like, you know, we're teaching him a little bit now. And so, um, definitely could be a – like, he's an offensive player. Like, give me wrong, he's an offensive player. He's going to – he's pushing to be a starter at receiver. And he's a guy that we want to give him the ball. But, like, he had a great scrimmage on Friday. Like, like really a great scrimmage. Like, um, was really excited about his growth at receiver in that scrimmage. Um, but he's also a guy that, you know, could potentially, if he stays, could could give us some snaps at nickel, and maybe that doesn't put stress on us where we have to go find somebody else. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's doable. I really do. Like, um, I don't think now the kid at Colorado, Travis Hunter, like what he's doing is special because he's playing a ton of plays, um, and, and I don't I don't think we're at a standpoint where we need him to do that, um, but I think it's a deal where he could play you know, six to ten on defense and wouldn't take away from anything he's doing on offense. We just have to watch what we do with him on special teams. Don't you have to do that in this game now? The more two-for-one players you have, the more versatile guys, the more depth you have. I just think you got to be open to it. Yeah. You know, like, and here's the thing, Rodney's, like, he, I just told him one day in the hall, I was like, hey, why don't you go over there and we'll see you, we'll put you in our dime package, see how you do. And he was like, oh, yeah. You know, I was like, remember I told you in recruiting? He's like, yeah. I was like, let's go see what it looks like. So I think you just got to be open to it, you know. We so we had a kid, Marcus Jones, at Troy, um, and he's playing for the Patriots now. But um, great player. Uh, <laughs> I wish I, I wish I would have got him here then. But uh, um, but Marcus, great kid, and we used him on. He was a, he was a corner, and he was a great punt returner, great kickoff returner, um, and we played him. He was a corner. That was his number one position, and um, we used him on offense. And he hurt his shoulder um, his second year with us. So that had been my last year at Troy. He hurt his shoulder. And on defense, it's hard to protect. You can't really protect. On offense, you can kind of protect yourself. You know, you can go down. Like, if you're going to get hit. And so he was like, man, he was on me about playing. And I knew he was a special player. So I was like, eh. Nah. And so I was like, you know what? I was like, you can play. And, you know, his mom and dad, he got released by the doctors. But I was kind of like, man, it's a shoulder. Eh. And so we just played him on offense for two weeks, and told him he only he only played offense, and uh, and then from that point on we played him both ways, and he he you, you can do it you know like because now you can't I think it's really hard like that, like what what the hunter kid's doing is special but like I think you can you can dabble for sure. But I mean your wide receivers are learning all the positions your your defensive backs I mean you have to do that today you, if you have one guy that only plays one spot. I mean, that, that's kind of robbing your depth a little bit. You can, and, and you got enough time now. Yeah. You know, the OTAs in summer, that stuff has really helped. Where you can meet football-wise, yeah. you should be able to do football almost year-round. Where you know, you don't want to do too much, but guys should their knowledge should be better. You know, recruiting-wise, you've had a lot of guys come through the building that you know we, mm -hmm. we see uh, all the time. Different recruiting off the success you had last year that maybe in previous years. Um, you know, I think that. Um, I think there's a couple things. I mean, it's easier just because I don't I don't have to deal with with the narrative that I was dealing with last year, um, so that helps. Um, but we've also had a lot of success with freshmen, and most people want to play early now, so I think that has really helped. And we've been pushing these spring visits because um, I just think that the way the kind of the recruiting model works. Is things happen fast. So we've had a lot of 20, 25 kids here, but we've had a lot of 26s too. Um, and for them to watch spring practice, and they can observe things in spring practice they don't get during a normal recruiting, like a game visit or a junior day or an official visit, because it's the only time they can actually see a practice. So they see what the depth looks like. They can see the schematics that we're running. They also can see the coach to player interactions, the player to player interactions. Um, and those are critical, you know, and they get a feel for like, what is the environment, you know, at practice. And, and, and so we've really been pushing guys to come and we've had a bunch, we've had a bunch. It's a, um, we've had a lot going on in a good way.
basketball one, I guess. If you've got a lineup of like five, six, seven guys, it's pretty hard to defend. Your receiver is about the same size, but heights and weights are pretty similar. I yeah. imagine that helps with inside and outside too. Is not saying that's part of the plan, but maybe it functions that way too a little bit. Yeah, we got we got one. Um, we need we we don't have the real long guy. You know, if you if you follow us in recruiting, that's the piece that we're trying to get. Is we um, I like our body types, like Jaden Bray, Traylon Ray, like Hudson, like those are really good outside body guys. Um, and Preston, y'all can see him. He's put on about 10 pounds, and he's got this um, innate knack for how to adjust his body. And that's a talent. You know, I'd love to tell you we taught that. That's, that's just a talent um, that he has. Um, we're missing – like a real long guy, but that's the only really body type that that we're missing in that receiver room is just a six four plus guy. Neil, you know, I've got a spring game question, and this is just something I've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, teams keep experimenting with what to actually do in spring games, and, and some of them just yeah. cancel. W would there be any value in like playing in different venues, like just for the novelty aspect yeah. of it? Like, yeah, there is like change of. Like change of scenery does a does, you know like, um, like fall camp stuff. Like I've been a proponent. Like <clears throat> there's some there's a couple different places in in southern West Virginia that that I would be for if we could we could make it work financially. Because um, I do think a change of scenery does. You know the way that works. Like every time I go to the beach, I feel better coming back. You know like it's like change of scenery uh, definitely helps. Um, you know, the spring game stuff is – we've done a little bit of everything, man. We we made it kind of a – you know, Lane got a bunch of – we didn't go quite as far as, as Ole Miss did, but, like, at Troy we used to have – we would make it kind of a um, – more of a, like, celebration and fun and, like – because to me, like, I want, I want the spring – now, like, a couple years because people administratively just wanted a spring game. So, like, all right, shit, if you want to be boring, we'll be boring, you know, but, like – to me, like the spring game is unique, and you know it's like how, how many inter squad games? You know, like let's do something fun. Let's do something. You know, so um, we've got a couple of really good ideas, especially uh, around getting our young people involved, like some some young fans, getting them down on the field and doing some things. Uh, we're going to play. You know, uh, we're not going to play four quarters of live football on a week from Saturday. You know, we're gonna we're gonna play some football because our fans deserve to see what our team like our players and our players like competing too. Um, but we're also gonna do some some competitions and we're gonna get some people involved and and do some things that that'll make our fans especially want to bring their young people. You know, I always think, all right, hey, Dax is nine. Like, what would make him be entertained at this spring game? <laughs> you know, like if I'm if I'm bringing. All right, my kids, like, what is something that would be like, man, this is a different experience? Because you come to – we play Penn State, man, you're not getting on the field, right? You're not going to have a chance to go up to Sean Martin and dap him up or talk to Garrett Green. So how can we do some things in the spring game that maybe makes a family that maybe they can't afford to come or a family that wants to have an experience meeting a player, taking a picture of a player? How can we make this a special deal, um, especially here at West Virginia, because we're the state's team, right? Like – we're the state's team, and we need to be accessible. And uh, so we're we're uh, and when we're ready to announce it, I think it'll be a um, a fun day a week from Saturday. Huey, Huey Mack fan, more Charles was. Hey, God. listen, I'm I'm for all. Uh, listen, I'm for all local people making it. All right, he had a cool video. I know Clint Clint was Clint Trickett was in that video, and uh, and so I, I know his music. What about Charles Wesley, man? He's opening up for Luke Combs. I look up, he's playing in the Brewer Stadium. Um, um, I think that I'm for all these guys, really. Like, I'm for any of these local people that can make it. Um, you know, I felt the same way growing up in Kentucky. You look at all these guys, like, that that from Eastern Kentucky that have made it huge, and in, in, in guys and girls that, that have made it huge in country music. Um, I just think that – I know what it feels like being from a small town and you do, you, you've been able to do things that haven't been done before. And I know how people get behind you. And, uh, and I was telling, uh, uh, Charles Wesley, this, uh, I can't remember. I don't know if that was when I saw him in concert or, 
or when he was at the baseball deal. But, man, what a cool – like, you can feel – like I went to that concert back. I don't even. Whenever we did that country roads um, uniform reveal, and uh, and like everybody's just pulling for him to do well, you know. Like I went down the players championship, um, and a buddy of mine, and uh, and so the first song they played is uh, is is Q Country Roads. I got in his car and he played Q Country Roads. I'm like, oh, you know this? He's like, oh, this is awesome. And I like and I, like I just think it's cool, you know, like. Anybody that's local and like he he's doing his 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 music's a little bit different. He's got a unique sound and yeah, so for sure I'm pulling I'm pulling for him. I'm glad he's opening up spring game. Anybody else? All right, thank y'all.